I'm, I'm honored to, to um, moderate this session. I've been asked to um, because we do, I have a passion for decentralized networks um, as we do mobile mesh networks. Um, so um, I feel really honored and I look a bit not like a startup uh, person right now because I already had a three hours workshop at the HR festival um, and I'm also a dance artist. So that was about tango lifestyle meeting corporate culture. That's the outfit, so I hope you like it. <laughs> so, um, we have three winners here. There are, there are um, awarded projects by the Mozilla Foundation. Um, the panel is um, Access All Areas, Independent Infrastructure, Brazil, India, and South Africa. So, very international here. Um, um, can I have on stage um, Jasper, Jasper Singh? I think we, we all go on stage or we go one after other? Okay, we do one after. So then I say something about, they are the main winners. They are the ma main winners. <laughs> the project is called um, Grandmark, right? And they are the Wayne winners of the Mozilla Equal Rating Challenge, um, which is um, a, um, a challenge by the Mozilla Foundation um, in order to foster an open internet. Um, they are interested, or they see the internet as a global public resource, and therefore they created this challenge. Um, they have three principles. Um, those are um, free discrimination, free of discrimination, um, free of gatekeepers, and free of pay to play. So, um, Jasper, um, you, are, you are the senior project engineer of the Department of, uh, of elect Electrical Engineering of the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai. I had to write this down, as you can see. <laughs> so I hand over to you. We're going to have uh, three minutes presentations of each project, and then we're going to discuss a little bit of the challenges. And um, the last thing is we're going to have a Q&A session. So, Jasper. Thank you, Ian. So introduction part is done. Let me get back to my presentation. So we call this solution as the Gram Mark solution. Let me just explain, uh, just spend 10 seconds. So gram in uh, it's a it's a Hindi word gram uh, so Indian you can say so gram means way uh, so villages and the mark is a way so we find a way uh, to the villages that is to the ruler so I think uh, what we focus here is the connectivity what about the the people who are unconnected ones so we just find the solution uh, through this. Uh, Mozilla Open Innovation Challenge, which has given us the platform to, to showcase globally. So, and we have won, and thank, thank you for that. Okay, so the current situation in India is just like, you can see four billion people unconnected globally even. Okay, so 800 million, that's 6,40,000 villages. We have 6,40,000 villages in India. And uh, what unconnected? I mean, like, uh, there is no connectivity. So forget about uh, the mobile connections, so 2G even. So they are totally unconnected, means they are totally black. So by this, so we have many challenges. What? So there is no backhaul. Backhaul is the fiber point of presence that is the, the, the way, the point where the interconnect, internet connection is actually terminated. So like uh, you are getting signals on your mobile, so, so nearby there is a cell station where it, uh, where it uh, emits and you are able to receive. So in uh, the villages, there are no f backhaul. So this is the first of the main challenges. Second, so why, uh, why these villages are unconnected? Because uh, it's low, uh, no private operators are going because low ARP. ARP is what average revenue per user. That means private operators don't want to go into the villages because uh, they feel like no income is coming back, so they, they just don't want to go. So next, difficult talent. So in New India is mix of terrain, different terrain lines, somewhat is hilly, less hilly, we can call them as ghats. Someone sees rivers, so it's a mix, so you know, we have to plan geographically, and you know, planning itself in different is very difficult. 
So we came as a solution. So what is we, what is a solution? So it's a TV white space. You know, white space is called as free junk in the television spectrum. So we have different different spectrum. You know, okay, it's like uh, 100 megahertz, 200 megahertz. The frequency we call. So there is. Uh, the, the frequency which came around 480 to 580 megahertz is the television frequency which currently rests with the national broadcaster Doordarshan, but that is totally unused. So in different parts of the countries, small junks like 8 megahertz are there, but in India, a complete band of like 90 megahertz is lying free and nobody is using them. So what we are proposing to the government, hey, why don't you use it? Where are you putting? Because, you know, spectrum is very scarce. So it's like uh, if today, at this moment, you're not using the spectrum, it's totally waste. Like coal, we are burning, it's gone. Like spectrum, we are not using it, it's gone. Okay. So we came up with the unique solution. Why we call this unique solution? Because it's a one-box solution. Where the fiber terminate ends, we give them a box that you can take the internet connection from the fiber point of presence to the unconnected one using these different locations like backhaul is again using the TV white space. Uh, so we have developed low powered, low cost solution chips that can be utilized to, to take the internet from the fiber of point of presence to the different one. So it has unique property like smaller is the frequency, greater penetration. You can go a long far better like 10 to 20 kilometers you, you have gone. So and sec, third one is the coverage area. So you can cover more. I mean, like, so because terrain, different, different terrain, and the village are situated too far, so you can cover different and long villages which are very unconnected with the help of this solution. So this can be uh, turned into the backhaul, which means fiber of point of presence to the unconnected one, and then same box can be used for 2.4 gigahertz, and all are connected through cloud. Cloud is like you can collect, uh, control it any, anywhere. So next, so it's like scalability. So low cost, low mobility, that means the pedestrian. We call them as fixed broadband. Users are fixed, like you're sitting here, you're getting internet, so don't need to move because people in the villages, they just stay, they go uh, in the work day night, so in the night time they can utilize. So the main thing is we are focusing it's fixed. So what we call this as frugal 5G. So scalability is very easy. Off-the-shelf hardware, buy the off-the-shelf hardware, use the open, uh, so open source RF card. So whatever we have developed, de developed, so we have put it like open source. Anybody can use these RF converters and provide the end-to-end -end solu uh, digital solution to the ruler and the unconnected communities. So that's what we say, that we have end-to-end -end digital solutions for connected, the ruler, or the unconnected, or the underserved communities. What is the need of the nation? We have unconnected peoples. We have technology development at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. We have network planning tool that tell you, okay, this Gram Panchayat or uh, this village should be connected to this uh, fiber point of presence and all. So we have uh, te uh, technology tested at different, different test beds, properly tested, Yes, working fine. And then we have social economic changes. That means if you can just uh, uh, do this, so people will, uh, people, we are going to create the village level entrepreneur. That means it's the, the model is very sustainable. If you go around, people will use it and the revenue will be definitely generated. But with what? With low cost solution, with low power. So this is the only thing. Less capex is there, more revenue is there. So that's why we call this, this solution is very feasible. So thank you. Thank you, Jasprit. So, um, we have the second winner of the equal, Mozilla Equal Rating Challenge. Um, that is Tim. Tim from Project um, Isiswe. Um, Tim has a background in digital um, media and advertising. And he's, um, he joined Isiswe as head of content. And uh, figuring out that content is a good business, he opened a new business that is called Topeza. Correct? So here you have. Cool, thank you. Here we go. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. Cool. I'll get started. Um, hi, everyone. Good to be here. 
Um, so I'm from Project Disease which is an organization, a non-profit that delivers free public Wi-Fi in uh, public spaces in South Africa, predominantly in low-income communities. We started in 2013, and the main thing that we did that was our primary kind of driver of success is that we convinced uh, the city of Tuane, which is the capital city of South Africa, and one of its biggest metros, that the internet should be a municipal service, like water and electric electricity, everyone should get a ba basic daily quota of Wi-Fi. So we started out at risk, did five sites, and the city said if you hit certain targets, then we'll talk about a bigger project. We smashed those targets out, and they could see that there's a massive demand for this public Wi-Fi. Um, since then, it's been a snowball effect, and we've delivered over a thousand free internet zones, as we call them, which are maybe the size of these two rooms would be one free internet zone. So we've got a thousand across the city of Chwane, connecting over a hundred thousand users a day, and since inception we've connected three million unique devices to the internet. And just to give you some context, there are only about three million people in Chwane, but obviously a few people have um, multiple devices. But we've made a huge impact in Chwane, and people are are using it daily all the time to keep connected. Um, how we managed to make it affordable and at a fraction of the cost that a, a regular sort of private supplier would be able to provide is we use municipal infrastructure. So we use city power, um, we use high, city high sites, city venues for the actual antennas, and it just clears a lot of the red tape um, about digging trenches and getting permissions and just makes it a lot faster and a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Um, we also use local suppliers, so we don't have a centralized techie team who goes around the country or around the city. We use local guys who are already going out to richer people who are getting Wi-Fi put in their house, but we just pay them to go into the informal settlements with the, where they normally wouldn't go to do the basic sort of uh, maintenance uh, and servicing of the hardware. Um, we've also struck deals with major fiber suppliers. There's a huge amount of fiber in South Africa under the ground, but these suppliers don't have any incentive to bring it out of the ground and go the last mile for these informal settlements because no one's going to pay for it unless you strike a deal with a city like we have. Um, so we're giving them a discounted price, but it's better than getting nothing for this fiber that's just continuously flowing underneath the ground. And then we've also got deals with providers like Ruckus um, Hardware as part of their CSI. Um, one of the other main things that we do, which has been part of our success, is that we offer significant data. Um, 500 megabytes per day, per device. And the main driver behind this is that in South Africa, mobile data, especially on prepaid plans, is hugely expensive. 87% um, of SA users are on prepaid data plans. And depending on how much you buy, that, uh, how much you buy at one time, 500 meg will cost you plus minus $10, which is a daily wage if you're lucky enough to have employment. So you can imagine that having that 500 megabytes per day is really putting money back in, in, in people's pocket. And the problem that these mobile data users have had is that it almost becomes a self-enforced walled garden in that you only access the internet for the very basics of what you need to do. So WhatsApp, Facebook, Check email if you have email, which a lot of our users didn't initially. Um, and just you have a very sort of rudimentary understanding of what the internet is. But once you give people 500 megabytes a day and they don't have that fear of data consumption and fear of just losing money, then they're able to research um, their degrees, research their school projects, look for jobs, make digital CVs. And these are just some feedback. So, like the English isn't great because they're verbatim. Um, but you can see that. Um, people are using it uh, for, for things that are greater than what they can just use 10 megs or 50 megs or 20 megs that they would normally buy. Um, video is a huge driver on our network because obviously people on their own mobile devices can't get video. So obviously they watch a lot of entertainment content and as this guy says, he, he gets the soccer, but there's a lot of learning material that we push over our content portal and things to sort of open up the internet and say there's, there's a lot more out there than just the basics that you know of. So that's where we've been, but 
the next chapter is to take it national and hopefully continent-wide. But our main issue is because we are um, quite reliant on government funding, um, we subject to obviously what happens in government. So, for example, last year there was a change in government at the local level. So it's a it's a whole new um, system, a whole new contracting process, all of that. So we just can't move fast enough relying on government contracts. So, Afrify is the is the next chapter of Project Isiswe. We're consolidating other public free Wi-Fi networks across the country under one banner. Obviously, the more users you can get online, the more and the and the wider the spread, the more valuable it will be to sponsors. And instead of users just getting 500 megs a day, like currently, they're going to have to earn their Wi-Fi. So they might have to watch a video, download an e-book, play, e play a game, um, download an app. They'll have to undertake some action in order to unlock that next level of data. And that's where we'll approach the sponsors, that instead of um, that, that video that they create costing people data, it's actually going to give them data. So it's flipping the model. Um, and allowing brands to get involved and be part of the story of, of providing people with um, free Wi-Fi. Obviously, another important part of this is going to be data collection, but we're very cognizant of the fact that we, we're not going to take or pass on any personal information. It's all going to be anonymized and aggregated, but it is going to be important for sponsors. Um, with this, though, we can also serve a lot more personalized and relevant content, as well as advertising, and unlocks the opportunity to get private sec uh, sector sponsorship one example um, is that we've got a deal with one of the major banks to deliver their job readiness program um, over the Wi-Fi. Um, I can see I'm taking up your time. So, um, yeah, that's where we're going. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot, Tim. And we have the third winner from Brazil, um, Adriano. He's a journalist by background. Um, we're involved in a lot of um, free technology and independent media projects. And you are uh, presenting the project um, Co-op Lab. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm glad to be here. First of all, I'd like to thank to Mozilla and all the gig team for inviting me to be here and share a, a little bit about a project that we have started in Brazil. It's called CoLab, and it's a network based on cooperative principles that and dedicated to reduce the digital divide in Brazil. So just to give you some numbers, about 40% about of Brazilian population have no access to the internet. And although CoLab has only a few months, we aggregate a bunch of people who have been working deeply in the last years with different aspects related to mesh networks, related to community-owned internet service providers, uh, community radios, and so on. But the main difference from Collab to our previous experience is that now we are addressing the connectivity issue in scale. So instead of raise funds and donating the equipments for each community, we, as we use it to do, now we will make a low one, and all our investment will be recovered in one year at most. So with this money back, we will keep connecting new communities, and we are also thinking in a kind of mensal or association fee for the groups in order to support our network. And this week we are finishing a, an open call to communities interested in implementing infrastructure for digital communications. We are interested mainly in low income and rural, rural areas, areas uh, in, in places where you won't find any other alternative for digital communication, right? So basically we are going to fund communities in three different kinds of, of fields of service. The first one is simply to connect the communities to the internet. So we can, we can use it to uh, use mesh networks, but actually we can do it with any kind of network topology. And the second one, the second one consists in local service that can work 
uh, in the, uh, without internet, local service that only works in a certain place, in, certain, in a certain community. And finally, we intend to support grassroots community GSM stations. So with this kind of mobile service providers owned, owned by the, uh, the community, they can make uh, almost free calls inside the, the network and very cheap calls for abroad uh, using uh, voice over IP. So we can, we can also text, use the text messages for free in this area. And so we are proposing not only developing uh, independent infrastructures for the internet, but also infrastructures for digital communications that are uh, independent from, from the internet. So we are trying to develop infrastructures that can, can work uh, in, at not entirely or at least uh, with, without a, a big de dependence of the internet. So it, it seems to me an important point because we know how, uh, now we know how compromised is the infrastructure of the internet if you think about surveillance, if you think about privacy, or if you are talking about uh, data autonomy. So basically, after the selection, we will lend equipment and train communities in all different aspects related to the operation of such infrastructure. And it includes not only technical aspects, but also legal, logistical, and financial topics about operates uh, a system like this. And actually, it's an important point. We don't install the service. We only teach, teach the community to how and train them to operate this kind of service. And we are, of course, we support them along the way until the community feels ready to operate by themselves. So I, I don't know if I, I have more time. I, I will keep talking because he's not paying attention to me. <laughs> so just one more point. Uh, we, we, another, other possibility is that the, organiz, the organization responsible uh, for the service management, local service management, can also implement small charges to the users to cover the operation cost, costs and it, it could be done through vouch, voucher systems. The users buy voucher, can, then they can call, they can use the internet or use a local service, and it will help the community, the, the service, to, to maintain, to provide the, the, the sustainability, so some, some kind of sustainability for the system. So basically that's it. We are very excited to select the, the villages, the, the groups that we work, and we are planning to next month start the, the, to implement this kind of infrastructure there. And that's it. Thank you, Adriano. So uh, let's take um, all three winners um, here on, on the stage. So, I would say very powerful projects we have in here. Um, we would like just to have like a little bit of a discussion because I mean, um, what comes to my mind is um, there are probably big players um, on the corporate side um, that are not so much in favor. Um, so what is your experience? Um, and other big players like the government, how is the government um, dealing with you? So what, what was your experience in that? Who wants to start? Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, so that's correct. So why we have solution, we have everything, but still it is not implemented because, uh, yes, government is playing here the major role. The, as I said earlier, uh, the television spectrum rests with the national broadcaster Doodarshan and uh, government is not uh, it, it's like it's a, it's a licensed one it's not unlicensed anybody can, we, i can't use it so what we have done we have taken an experimental license for one year and tried this, all the experiments but yes uh, and uh, it is related again with the corporate sites yes you know everybody so it's india it's like a 
big big telecom market so recently uh, jio reliance jio that is mukesh ambani is one of the richest person of india he launches 4g services in india and due to which i mean like it's it's like so yes uh, government here is playing the major role it's not uh, uh, delicensing this man because of the influence of the big telecom market but we are very trying hard by using the open innovation challenge so that we can tell globally ki look this is this is a better solution and we can use and to provide the connectivity to the rural ones thank you um yeah from our side i think when we started we were a small non-profit and the mobile operators just didn't really care to be honest um because it was just a negligible amount um of people but as it's got bigger they have started taking notice but i think our kind of what we say to them is that actually we're helping them because people are going to these public spaces and getting the free wifi but they're starting to understand what the power of the internet is as i said earlier that they're starting to watch videos that they're starting to delve deeper into these things that they don't want to go home and not have access to it so it is actually getting people to to sort of understand the internet and as they go up in life and as they have a bit more money they will start using that that mobile network because we have fixed place um we not really eating into day to day we are but not not enough in fact we'll probably help them in the long term so uh about the the big company big players and the the kind of community or village that we are planning to work is not exactly the kind of community that uh the mo big mobile service providers or big companies they want profit enough with in, in this place in this kind of village so they want to operate there there's no other alternatives so it's not uh, until, until now it's not a really a, a big problem for us but we are also planning to make uh, create some partnership with local local business uh, local governments and local companies also So um I see we have one more minute. <laughs> um so I think um you have a lot of questions and they are all valid um and we should continue the talk at the gig at the global innovation gathering at the maker space in there so I think you have a lot of questions that you can ask Maybe. the panelists. Yeah or yeah but the next panel is going to start. So ask them um um we have one more minute or we are through. <laughs> so it's a very simple question. They as you are offering a social service how do you what are the criteria for the people to apply? Who would you give access to in priority because what you give is so nice we're talking about millions tens of millions of people how much can you really afford to offer the service and what would be the criteria for selecting the first one to be offered? So let me please just say the question in the microphone otherwise it wouldn't be on the recording. The question was what's the criteria to select uh who participates because the demand is so big. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so <clears throat> so selecting uh, the selection based is on the uh, in in my case I mean like uh, so uh, first we need to get the point of presence where there is a point of presence so we can see the uh, to extendability okay this is the internet availability so these are the far more areas which are, are connected so we we need to uh, the selection is based purely in my case in that scenario where is the actual point of presence and uh, uh, so we select and second the geographically to set up the test bed i think this is the selection kit um for us i mean although we're moving to a more sustainable model we still aim to work with municipalities um so historically we've worked with the mu municipality to identify areas where the most need was and go from there i mean in, in trwani there is a project the idea is that we take um as we are treating it like a municipal service just like um people need to walk maybe 1 km to a to a bus stop we want to bring a, a free internet zone within 1 km of every person in the city Um so that's the idea for that city and that's what we want to roll out that it will cover everybody but not into everyone's home but you should be able to go there for your daily quota. Yeah. Yeah. 
we have to stop. I'm getting like angry looks here. Um, so thanks a lot. Thank you.